staying peaceful in our time. You know, the world that we live in and the busyness of the world, the fast pace of everything that we are facing makes us all frenetic. We're always running, you know, and to everything and running, uh, running from everything. We have so much going on in our minds and we never stay still sometimes. But peace is part of your inheritance and my inheritance. It's what Jesus bequeathed to us. Come with me, let's open with John 10.10, 10. amen? John 10.10, 10. just by way of jumping into this, this teaching today. John 10.10, 10, very familiar, and yet the word of God is always worth reading. The thief comes only in order to steal, to kill, and to destroy. That's Satan. He is out to kill and to destroy, but also he wants to steal our peace as well. But Jesus doesn't leave us there. He says, but I came that they may have and enjoy life and have it in abundance to the full till it overflows. He didn't just give us any life, but he said, in spite of the fact that the enemy wants to steal your life, steal your peace, and your ability to actually enjoy life. He said, but I came and I gave you a high life. A life that is in such abundance that it will overflow out of you. And in the times that we are in, God wants his church and he wants believers to carry them and be models of peace and stability in our time. Because the prince of peace is in your heart. But, and we're going to look at what makes that peace not being exhibited in our lives and some of the hindrances to that. And you know, in, in John 10, 10, interestingly, in verse 11, Jesus says this, I am the good shepherd. Not just any shepherd. I am the good shepherd. And, and the good shepherd does what? He risks and he lays down his life for the sheep. We, we, we call him the good shepherd. He's going to be good to us if we let him. Come with me if you're in your Bibles to John 14, 27. Don't lose your peace. John 14, 27. I read, peace I leave with you. This is what Jesus is parting words to us. Peace I leave with you. My own peace I now give and bequeath to you, not as the world gives, do I give to you. So because he has given you and gifted you and I an inheritance of peace in our spirits, he says, because of that peace, do not let your heart be troubled. Do neither let your heart be afraid. Hallelujah. Come on, two people saying amen. Do not let them be afraid. Stop allowing yourselves to be agitated and disturbed. And do not permit yourselves to be fearful and intimidated and cowardly and unsettled. Because that is what Satan wants to do. Peace has been gifted to you as your gift. It's in you. And as a result of that, you need to release and live your life from that peace. And then Jesus said, do not let your heart be troubled. That means that ownership is on you. You, are the, you have the ability to manage your heart, which is your will, your mind, and your emotions. He says, don't let it be unsettled. He says, don't allow yourself to be agitated. Because that's what the enemy does. Even if he starts it through simple things, you know, someone cutting across you in traffic, you know, your boss saying something to you, little things happen, and he starts to steal that peace bit by bit. And then and it throws you, and then you're unsettled. This morning when I was getting ready, here I am, I'm coming to teach on peace, God's woman of paste and flour for the hour. Just came out of the oven of God. <laughs> and then something immediately comes to my mind about one of my daughters, and suddenly I'm getting upset, and then I catch myself. That's why I'm talking to you this morning about the same message that I'm preaching to myself. Don't lose your peace. 
Because what happened was immediately going to let me lose my peace. And when you lose your peace, you become unsettled. You become agitated. And then your emotions start to rise. And Jesus said, whenever you see or you sense, whenever you sense that rising coming to you, he says, just let peace. Remember, the peace is in your heart. And your heart is that center. And he wants that center to be peaceful and calm, no matter what is happening in your life or your circumstances. Because it's not your circumstances that give you peace. Whether they're good or bad circumstances, are you hearing me? It is his peace that the Prince of Peace has come to live in your heart that gives you peace. So he says, take action. Take action in your emotions so you don't lose or, or let it affect your peace. You have to want and crave and pursue a desire to be a stable person. Peace is about stability. So I want to take you to Psalm 23. And whilst you attend to Psalm 23, I shared in the first service, I have read Psalm 23 a lot in the last two years. Um, nearly every week, I find myself, the Lord, or possibly leading me there a lot, even in my work in counseling and my own private life. I, I don't know why, but Psalm 23 has become such a mainstay of Scripture. And it has had such profound meaning and revelation and comfort and strength. And I hope God does the same and in your spirits today. But Psalms 22, a bit of background, 23 and 24, all go together. Because Psalm 22 speaks of Jesus as our Savior. And, and when you have time, do read it. Psalm 22 verse 1 begins by saying, Oh my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And begins to recount Jesus' journey to the cross in Psalm 22. Then in Psalm 23, we read an experience. He wants us to experience him in our, as, as a shepherd. Not just any shepherd. I said a good shepherd. The one who risked and the one who laid down and took a hit for you and I. Then in Psalm 24, we call it the sovereign psalm. And it says this, the king of glory is coming in. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That is why for you and I, nothing should jolt us. You know, first he becomes our savior and goes to a cross and he rises again in victory. And then in his resurrection, he comes to live in our hearts and he says, I am the good shepherd, but also I am the shepherd of your soul, your center. That if you allow me to be your shepherd, I will help lead and navigate your life. Then verse 24, he says, I'm coming again in my victory. And that hope is that what we set our affection on, that he's coming again. Hallelujah. Amen. So are you in Psalm 23, verse 1? The Lord is my shepherd to feed, guide, and shield me. I shall not want. I'm going to read the whole psalm, then we're going to unpack it. The Lord is my shepherd to feed, guide, and shield. I shall not lack. He makes me lie down in fresh, tender, green pastures. He leads me beside the still and restful waters. He refreshes and restores my life, myself, and he leads me in the paths of righteousness, uprightness and right standing with him, not for my earning it, but for his name's sake. Yes, though I walk through the deep, sunless valley of the shadow of death, I will fear or dread no evil, for you are with me, your rod to protect and your staff to guide. They comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My brimming cup runs over. Surely, that certainly, only goodness, mercy, and unfailing love 
shall follow me all the days of my life and through the length of my days the house of the Lord and his presence shall be my dwelling place. I'm going to just do sila and allow that psalm to just sit on the ground of your heart. I have been studying about sheep as a result of this since the last two years since I've been reading the psalm. That the Lord is my shepherd. The psalm was written by King David who was a shepherd boy himself but also recognized that the Savior was the shepherd of Israel and the shepherd of our souls. But in order for Jesus Christ to be your shepherd, it means that you have to give him permission. You have to surrender the full control of every arena of your life. Because a shepherd leads and guides the sheep to feed them to guide them, to shield and protect them. And the shepherd, first of all, needs you to give up the control. Because you see, he, he, you, we call him our savior and our Lord, but really, is he the shepherd of our lives? Because if you study sheep, first of all, sheep naturally are one of the few animals that have a poor sense of direction. That's what I, I, I've learned about them. So they need the shepherd. Is he your shepherd? Because as your shepherd, he wants to feed you. Then he wants to guide you. That's direction. We need direction more than anything in our lives. Every waking moment of our lives, for our careers, for, 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 for our families, you know, for, for our jobs, for where do we turn in our family, we need direction. Then he says, I want to shield you. That's protect you. Psalm 91 verse 1 says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty whose power no foe can withstand. That means when you live under his shepherding and his governance and you dwell under that, nothing can attack your life. He said, you remain stable and fixed, no matter what is happening in your life or in the world around you. He wants to be the shepherd, to feed you, then to guide you, and then to protect you. I shall not lack. That word lack speaks of overall provision. But he needs to take control of your life. You know, I was sharing that I get lost a lot. I have taken it to the Lord in prayer that am I the only woman in London who gets lost with navigation? And the Lord has assured me I am not the only woman. There are many like me. No, he didn't. But yes, I have discovered a lot of my friends have the same trouble. Yes, some men too who will not own to it. Yes. So I get lost a lot. I'm actually writing a devotional that the Lord put on my heart called Road Trip. And it's full of direction and guidance from God, but it's also full of my own stories of how many times I've been lost. You know, first Velda said to me that I got a cheaper navigation in my last car because I bought it, my, I made it myself, kind of. You don't want to know. I didn't get it off the back of a lorry either, thank you very much. But it wasn't very good. It takes me all sorts of places. For somebody who has poor direction already, naturally, then I have bad navigation. But now I got a good navigation. It came with the car, so I think it's good, because I didn't make it. And I still got lost. The other day I was driving, coming from my osteopath appointment that I do regularly. And then I just got lost on the other side of the A406, and I was lost for hours and hours. I'm serious. My daughters used to tell me when I get lost, you're lucky you have petrol in your car. Because they say no young people get lost like that for long. But I got lost, but here's the thing, the Holy Spirit said to me, you know, and I heard his voice, he said, it was just a small distraction. And sometimes that's why we don't get the guidance. To get that guidance, remember the, 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 the verse I, I read to you, Jesus said, I bequeath my peace to you. But before that, he said, I'm going away, but I'm leaving you with a comforter, with a strengthener, with a standby, with a helper, with an advocate. So he's with you to what? Guide and lead you. He wants to lead first and then guide. But then are you listening? Because I got lost just by a small distraction. 
of not listening. The Lord is my shepherd to guide, to lead, to feed you and take care of you. Amen. The, the kingdom is within you. The Bible says, for the kingdom.